Jane. Who? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man and Spinner Red Renew Your Vows 2-pack. I wasn't going to get this, <laughs> but isn't that how most well-laid plans go? There I was, walking through Target thinking, well, this store usually sucks. I'm not going to find anything. Do a quick pass. Get out of here. And, of course, there was this one on the shelf. So I dug out my Target card, got 5% off, which helped with the prices these days. And I went ahead and grabbed it. I figured, oh, Wade talked up that Spider-Man last time I live streamed with him. And I've always liked the spinneret design. That white, that red. So, here we are. Looking at the package, this is, is this, is it? Is this my first foray into the windowless packaging? You got the promotional pictures of the characters. You have artwork from the comics. You have logos. You have warnings, choking hazard, small parts. Don't put it in your mouth. On the side, that comic art. On the back, more promotional shots showing you the figure in poses, the extras, what each one comes with. Warning small parts. Don't put it in your mouth. On the other side, there is the straight on promotional shots of the figures. On top, Spider-Man 60 Amazing Years. On bottom, half a Spider-Man hand. I don't know why I always love that design, but that, there it is. Legalese barcode. Let's get this open and see what's going on here. Now, I'm not really concerned with windowless packaging. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see the figures in the package, but most of the time I order online. So, of course, the first time I dive into one is the time I find it at the store. But I made sure the tape was intact. That was my biggie. I don't want other people digging into my toys and touching them or taking parts from them. But I did have a tinge of, hmm, wonder what the paint apps look like. So this is going to be a surprise for all of us. I got mummy figures. Baggies and a tissue papery, which is fine. It keeps them all together, I guess. Just want to make sure that I don't leave anything in there, especially white hands in white paper. That's kind of a cool reveal. Or maybe I'm just wanting a popsicle, because that's what that kind of looks like. Those popsicles you don't know the flavor of until you actually pull them out. Webs, 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 webs. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we're good on that front. Taking a look at Parker first, it's a good looking Spider-Man. I mean, we kind of knew that because it's reusing a lot of parts from the retro Spider-Man, but there are some differences. First and foremost, oh my god, it's pinless! See? No pins. And it's the same thing down here at the knees. Now, like I said during the Toad review, I'm not a stickler either way. I know they're slowly transitioning to pinless but it's taking time. 90 some odd percent of my Marvel Legends collection right now has pins. So them integrating them at this point is cool, but it's not a deal breaker for me. But when it comes to Spider-Man and the red outside of the arm, and the blue inside, oh man, pinless does wonders for this costume. As you can see on the retro version, the pins have to be red on the outside to match, but then but pinless doesn't just clean up the overall look, it also adds some stability because it thickens up the joint itself. Maybe because it doesn't need room for the mushroom pegs on the outside, it just does its own thing. So whereas this might be a little bit floppy, this is sturdier. Knees don't seem to be so much. Well, I've got a measuring tool, don't I? Put the calipers on it, dummy. No, it's about the same hundred thousandths. Hundred thousandths. But it's so pretty. There's also different heads. I'm not sure. Oh, Peter. Peter. What's going on? I'm not sure if this is reused from something else. I don't have all the Spider-Mans, but you can definitely see the bigger eyes and actually bigger cranium size. In fact, nose to the back of the head is 790, while the retro is 770. Uh, yeah, it's 20 thousandths of an inch, but... <laughs> It's a size difference, right? It's definitely noticeable here, though. There's also new shoulders, but that's easy to miss because of the web patterns. For some reason, that change, these being tighter, these being looser, it blows my mind. It throws my eye off. The retro is about 490, and Renew Your Vows is about 540. So again, about 50 thousandths. Not a huge difference, but it seems to help fill out the shoulder socket a bit better. The hinge on the shoulder is also more covered on the new version. On the retro, lots of center disc. But this caught me off guard. The Renew Your Vows is actually taller than the retro. Notice where the shoulders are and the crotches. I'm thinking it's down here somewhere. Well, the knees are off too. Is it all in the feet because of the new foot? It's somewhere down here because another added joint that wasn't on the retro is toes. And as much as the pinless helps the costume, the toes help the Spider-Man poses. You can get down into those deep crouches because there's still a flat part on the ground. The heavy lifting isn't on the ankle where you have to sometimes leave it like this and the 
hand won't reach the ground. Here, you can crank it as far as you want. Hell, you can bring it further than the hand. And then, like I said at the first, I love the spinneret design. I don't have any experience with it in the comics. I've only seen images on Google and this action figure. But the white and the red, it is just so striking. And with the added on bell bottom pieces and that red hair, it's kind of unmistakably Mary Jane, isn't it? Jackpot! Now these are separate pieces. They can float so you can get them out of the way of the ankle movement. And it's got a split on the inside. Again, like bell bottoms. If they're riding too high, you got some white up there above the red, makes it look like a sock down at the bottom. But resting on the foot, it's kind of perfectly positioned. It looks like those are going up into the white tights. Or is this the foot folded over because there's spider webs on that? Hmm. Like I said, the red hair up top, nicely sculpted, has a wash to it. The spider mask over the eyes, the very nice smile. This is a cool look for just standing on the shelf. Again, it's Mary Jane, but it looks like she's having fun. And that's what toys and comics are supposed to be. <laughs> just right there. This body is complete reuse of the Shriek body, which was the first female to have double elbows. And oh no, let's get that zoom in. Pinless! Can't see the pins at the elbows or the knees. So you get some full on bends at the elbow, which is very nice for females. We went a long time with the hinge and swivels that only came up to 90 or slightly past. So yeah, that's an upgrade. And yeah, pinless does make it clean. I guess that's cool. Maybe, whew, looking through the camera right now, that is some bright white. But I wish the torso was upgraded a bit. I'm getting spoiled by like Power Rangers, the very few I get. And, or well, G.I. Joe would be a better example. Put some kind of hinge down here with a dumbbell on top or some kind of ball here with some, just something to help get some crunch. There's some arc back, but she's a spider type character and she can't go forward. When I was doing the poses for pictures and stuff, she's limited because you can't get down into a three-point stance or crouched or maybe you can, but I, I, I'm just not that talented. And then one thing I am noticing paint-wise, all my webs seem to be there, but the coloration between the lower torso and the upper torso and then the top of the legs, the red seems slightly darker or the webs are a bit fuzzier than the other places? I don't know. Maybe it's my eye playing tricks on me. Still, love this design. Well, this overall, I love all of it. I love the retroness of this back logo. What's the front one look like? Oh, well, yeah, that's kind of throwback. But then there's these two holes that just so happens to fit the peg on a Medicom Mofex stand. How weird is that? So if you want her up web slinging, wall crawling, just jumping into action, that this is an option for you. Going over articulation, and I probably should have mentioned this a minute ago when I was doing my nitpicks, but for Spider-Man, I feel like we're still searching for a better neck setup. This is a dumbbell going up into the head, and even with this slot cut out right here, you just cannot get up enough. All the articulation in the body does a fantastic job of getting in a crouch position as close to the ground as it possibly can being a plastic action figure, but Peter can't look up and forward when he's down like that. I've been doing this kind of kicking it and then blue tack or something to help get a more up position. It's also not the greatest at down either. Quite a bit of tilt though, side to side. There's a butterfly joint that goes back and then forward. Pin going out to the arm goes all the way around. Hinge up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double pinless elbow goes up to here. Rotation, hinge in and out. Ball and or dumbbell at the mid torso gets hula hoop action. And then a hinge below that kicks forward, gets you that much crunch, just as much arc back, and that rotates mid torso. Drop down hip gives you this, and this, and this. <laughs> Still not the greatest Spider-Man out. Swivel at the thigh, pinless double knee comes up to here. It's so close, kick your own spider ass, there you go. Swivel at the top of the boot, hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin for rocker, and then a toe joint that does that. Our spinneret had a toe joint, that helped with the poses too. For her, there is the more traditional Marvel Legends ball at the top of a hinge. Can look up that far, down that far, that hinge was really tight. Lots of room around that ball joint, so there's so much tilt. Side to side, peg comes out to the arm, rotates all the way around, hinges up to there, swivel at the bicep, double elbow like I just showed, all the way up, better than Spider-Man. Swivel at the wrist, hinge in and out, dumbbell mid torso gets hula hoop, lots of tilt, lots of back, wish there was more front. All coming out to the hip, allows for this and this, and well, there is some out, but again, it's not all the way. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, 
Oh, easily kicks her own ass. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Spider-Man comes with two wall crawling hands, easy to pull out, comes with two thwip hands, and then comes with two fists. And Spinneret essentially has the same assortment, two wall crawling hands, two thwip hands, and two fists. Then like most Marvel Legends, the heads do pop off, and there is an unmasked Peter Parker head. Fairly nice looking, looks aged, and I'm just now realizing that Renew Your Vows would be later on in Peter's career. Maybe that's why this is slightly taller than the retro, or maybe that's just a happy accident of the new parts. Same thing for Mary Jane, and I wish I had, or I wish I could find the one that came with Gwen Stacy because I don't know if this is reuse of that or not. Looking at pictures online, the hairline seems the same, but not the jawline. Doesn't matter, this is still a nice looking MJ. Wish the hair would lay down better though. I do have this Mary Jane with the more prominent freckles, but older paint process? Darker hair? I foresee myself using this as spinneret for the rest of my life, so let's see what this looks like. Head seems kind of high and the hair still floats a bit. Skin tone slightly off, but... Mm. That's not bad. And I like the brighter hair. And she may stay like that. Size-wise, Spider-Man stands at about six and a quarter, while Spinneret stands at... Stands at about six inches somewhere in the hair. The bun actually goes up to six and... Well, somewhere around six and a quarter, too. Which, as we've already established, is slightly taller than the retro, but I'm surprised at how much this lines up. Now that I have these side-by-side, side, I like how Spinneret's more filled out. Well, I don't know why I'm doing this comparison. It's the same body, but the new Spider-Man is also taller than some of the older bucks. Well, okay, this one catches up a bit and then Gwen's just shorter, huh? They are much more substantial than some of my favorite imports like the Sentinel Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man or the Metacom Moffex comic book Spider-Man. But it can do this. So at the end of the day, a very interesting set that, again, I wasn't planning on getting, but I'm glad I did. I think this Spider-Man is now my Marvel Legends shelf Spider-Man. It just does all the things that I want a Spider-Man to do. Except for the neck. I'm still going to be harping on that. I think what it comes down to is they're just going to have to break down and put a ball at the bottom of the neck too. Otherwise, I like the colors. I like the web design. I like the spiders. I like the size of the eyes. This is all up my alley. And then for Spinneret, in case you missed it at the first, I have no experience with the character in the comics, I just love the look of this. And I know some people have problems with everyone gaining spider powers all of a sudden, but I kind of like the idea after all these years that Mary Jane's out there in the thick of it too, fighting side by side. I don't know if that's the actual story, but that's the story in my head and that's all that matters. Plus, the darker colors of Spider-Man, well, okay, not so much the red, but it's a darker blue. This white and brighter red is a nice contrast. You put these two on a shelf and they just pop together. Costume-wise, personality-wise, it just works. But again, getting to the register, even with the 5% off with the red card, oh, yeah, it's still expensive. But all I see these days are people going, well, if they're gonna raise the prices, they're gonna have to improve the product. And they may, well, seemingly, it depends on your opinion on the matter, it may not be happening in some places, but it happened here. The pinless, the toes, the double elbows on a female. Yeah, that was already existing, but you get the new head, you get the bell bottom pieces, you get the sets of hands that I think should come with every Spider-Man, you get alternate unmasked heads. It at least feels like they're working up to that price. There's still sticker shock because it, it's been a very quick da -ba 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 -ba, jump up there. I can only speak for myself. I'm pretty happy but your opinion may vary. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And again, look how deep it is. See, his foot can go even further. The toe's not even down. But as soon as I move this, my trickery is gonna become apparent. Oh no, it didn't. See, in order to get him to look up this far, this deep down, the head's just sitting here. If I were putting it on the shelf like this, it would definitely get blue tacked because it's just a matter of balance. 